Blessings and welcome. I am Tuesday May Thomas, and this is your weekly tarot energy forecast. I use the Osho Zen tarot deck, and I'm looking forward to reading with you this week. I have an announcement. I would like to say thank you to all of my new subscribers, and thank you if you're thinking about subscribing. If you like these messages, please do. I'm going to be announcing this fall some free ebook giveaways. I'm going to be launching a full novel and a couple of small mini books. And basically, the overview is Reiki healing, multidimensional mastery, and um, everything you need to know about your spiritual sensitivity and how to manage and navigate your energy in this 3D world. So please stay tuned, subscribe. If you'd like more information on that, I will be making further announcements. So without further ado, let's go ahead and shuffle the cards. We are calling in our angels, those divine light beings, ascended masters, loved ones that have passed, animal totems, all of those light energies that we wish to call in now to serve the highest messages, the highest communication through me and through these cards for everyone guided to participate, to watch even a little bit or this whole reading today. We'll take a nice breath and knowing that this reading is for August 11th through August 18th of 2017. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yes. <laughs> knowing that this reading is for August, oh, we just had a few poppers, August 11th through August 18th of 2017. Okay. Oh, I'm guided to pull these at the top too. All right, so let's lay out these few that we already have. And then we're going to pull a few more. So we have five cards down. I'll show you what they are here shortly. And I'm guided to just keep shuffling. And we'll see what divine guidance, what flyers, what poppers we have from this shuffle. Oh, there goes one. And we just need two or three more so we'll ask oh here we go okay I think I, I think we have everything we need okay all right <sighs> very very interesting because our theme has been about embodying the rebel nature our ability to be in the world and not of the world, our ability to truly, fiercely walk into and embody a new territory, a new sense of being that is unlike any version of ourselves that we've ever embodied here before. You can see the rebel is breaking through chains of old limitations. The eagle symbolizes freedom and divine guidance and the torch in their hand is them acclaiming self-mastery and like I am owning my light I am I am my own guiding light now but there's this juxtaposition here because there's a part of you that's having issues with not wanting to share that light so perhaps there's a means by which in this retrograde season that we're in during August, perhaps you are pulling in the reins a little bit and redefining and reconfiguring exactly how it is you wish to share in this world and what it is you wish to share in this world. You know, the book I'm releasing in the fall is called The Reiki Apprentice, and it's a memoir. It's my story, and it, <laughs> it was such a cathartic emotional healing to actually birth that to write it and it took me back to all these old old emotional issues which were just so painful on one hand yet on another hand so important to get through those and to give them a voice so that they can be extracted and released but with that I give away a lot yet there were a few gems there were a few sacred parts of my story that I kept completely for myself and it was a fine line between me figuring out you know what I have to tell enough of the truth of my story and it is a true story so I have to tell enough of that to heal my life but also to convey the strength of the messages yet there's one or two sacred parts of my story that I'm gonna keep just for me and that are not for sharing 
and that I will never tell. I will never speak because those are a part of my power in a way, if you will. And so what I'm getting is that you have this time now to reconfigure how and what you need to keep sacred as your power, like the stones in your pouch. Um, you don't, you're not going to let every Bob, Joe, and Harry touch them. You're not going to take them out of the pouch and display them for everyone. Do not cast pearls upon swine, right? Maintain a sacred order within yourself and in that way keep a certain power. But as well, don't be afraid then to share what it is that you're here to share. It's like now that I've spilled the beans and spoken about abuse and obesity and issues with sexuality and all sorts of goodies <laughs> that's going to be in that book, you know, now it's out there. It's going to be out there. And I can't hold back. I have to meet myself where I've decided to share those jewels, right? So between what you're deciding to keep secret or to keep sacred for your own special part of the journey that's just for you and only for you, keeping those sacred jewels, but not holding everything back. If you hold everything back, then you will not be able to share the gifts that you are here to share. What is your, remember we were talking about this several weeks ago, what is your mission, okay? And it's not necessarily the mission part that's like the save the world, save the dolphins mission. It's like, are you here to organize gardens? <laughs> you know, are you here to fix cars? Are you here because you can't keep your hands out of people's mouths because you know you're just like a dentist at heart? You know, it's like those profound things. You can't put down the guitar. You just have to keep writing. Like, you know, that's just a part of your nature. It is whatever that comes simple to you and that is just with ease. Now, whether you're honoring that or not is a different story because sometimes it can be hard to honor that when we're not exercising those wheels and giving those talents or those graces a certain voice. But this week is all about revisiting, rewinding, re-examining, what those talents are, what your abilities are. And as the rebel, because the rebel is, I'm going to say it, the rebel's a total badass and really breaks the rules of the world. And in case you uh, need a reminder, I'll put a little link here to last week's reading because this is totally defying the matrix. Okay, so we're hearing these terms, exit the matrix. You know, what does that mean? I'll do a whole video on that <laughs> later. But basically, it's being in the world by your rules and not by the rules of the world. It's you governing and being clear enough to discern the truth and the calling in your heart. And, and despite everything that the world might tell you that that's wrong, that's bad, you're going to be sorry, it should, you should be afraid, it's too scary to do that, you do it anyway. That's the rebel. That's you going, boom, here I am. I'm a badass owning my story, owning my truth, and actually letting go of old stories and aligning myself with the truth in my heart. So sometimes the reason why we hold on to some of our jewels is because we are afraid to share. We are afraid to let the story go. There's a part of it we have identified with for so very long, being a victim, being abused, not feeling safe in the world, feeling we can't trust others, we can't trust money, whatever those stories are that have been passed on to us by our elders, by our communities, our cultures, traditions, families, etc. It's time for you to weave out what is not your truth. Because sometimes you might be holding on and not expressing your truth as the rebel because of a fear that's not even your own. A fear that's not even your own. It's just a subconscious, unidentified belief that has been steering your world. And this Mercury, this retrograde, <laughs> Mercury retrograde period, is definitely a wonderful time to sit back, reflect, journal, meditate, always meditate, we know that, but to really get in tune with like, what is my truth? What is my, you know, if I'm letting go of the old story, what is my new story? And it doesn't have to be full of, uh, it doesn't have to be too thick, you know, you don't have to get too um, feeling overwhelmed, like, oh my God, now I have to write a new story that's going to take two weeks, you know, no, 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 no. It's just, it's the simplicity of the truth that's there, right? Again, knowing, our work is knowing 
what's ours and what's ours to share. And once we've figured that out so that we don't become this like, oh, I got to hold on to everything because I'm afraid people are going to steal my ideas and they're going to take all my goods and I'm blah, 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 blah. You know, just all that, <laughs> that stuff that makes us feel like I can't share. I'm too afraid to share in the world. And granted, there is a divine timing, right? Maybe it's not every time, all the time to share your gold and your goods and, and all that. And obviously, as I said earlier, do not cast your pearls upon swine. Don't waste your word on the ears of those that are not interested, right? Right. Okay. So you get that. Compromise where you're going to compromise. Allow yourself to make those decisions of where you draw the line, where your healthy boundaries are. Now, this could be in relationship, in work, in job, in career, with your own willpower. Maybe you're focusing on shifting your body attitudes, your thoughts about body, uh, your diet, your exercise program. It could be about money, all of these things. And it's like, so where you draw the line and create those new healthy boundaries, then let them set like jello, you know, and meet them. Meet them there and honor them and exercise your will within those continuums because there's a chance, this laziness, this was a theme for like weeks on end a while back and we do not want to slip back into laziness, right? Because this is just like where we, this is where we numb out. We either use alcohol, we use drugs, we use video games, we use porn, we use whatever it is to like not face reality, to not feel our feelings. And the thing is that the rebel is so freeing and so liberating, yet for so many of us, it's terrifying because it's saying like, go on, go on, go on. And you're like, but, 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 but. Yet you've been training for this your whole life. And actually, you have been the rebel your whole life. It's just that you haven't been expressing and exercising those muscles, those synapses in your body. And so you're like, I don't even know what it means. And that's the excitement. So instead of being afraid, let yourself feel excited. When you think I'm afraid, think, no, no, I'm just excited. But sometimes we can freeze up and get into laziness and not want to get off the couch, out of the bed, out of the robe, get depressed and think like, this is too overwhelming. And so, we hold on to all of our goods, we end up not sharing, and this is what happens. Our emotions get frozen. Yet, the big key of this week is to trust, is to practice trust. So, I've got many books I'm going to be writing over the years, and one is about our energy vehicle, right? And it includes the Merkaba, the chakras, and the spinal column, the Shushumna, the crystalline tube. And there are bridges between each chakra. There is a bridge between your third chakra and your heart chakra, and this is the trust bridge. And when your energies of those first lower three chakras become activated, calibrated to a certain point, you begin to truly embody who you are, what you are in this third dimension without all the fear, without all the, I don't feel safe, I don't belong, I just want to kill myself, or I don't want to be here, and all those things, right, that can drag us down, self-doubt, self-sabotage. When we get through that, and we start to allow ourselves to live from that third chakra place, we are so empowered, because we're like, okay, I'm owning this body here in this third dimension, and what happens is then this trust bridge begins to light up, and the trust bridge is where reason takes over beyond logic okay uh like i posted something recently on the instagram where it's um member i don't know if you remember this but for me i remember as a kid the saying that um you know seeing is believing and you can't believe it until you see it well now the switcheroo is up with the with the with the ascension process of just this galaxy and everything that's happening happening cosmically is like now it's believing is seeing and that's what the trust bridge is all about it's defying logic it's not about making things make sense with the rational logical mind this is trusting which invites us into a place of knowing so knowing that it's safe to be you that it's safe to be the rebel trusting without having all the answers, without having it all figured out. Practicing self-love is a huge aspect of trust. When you practice self-love, you're saying all is well in all of creation. I trust myself, I trust this process. And it's really powerful because ultimately only you can do it for yourself. 
Only you can heal yourself. Yes, you can go to healers. Yes, you can go to tarot card readers. Yes, you can go to fortune tellers, you know, psychics and all that stuff. Absolutely, as you're guided. Yet, ultimately, there's only so much of that you can do until you have to make a choice for yourself. You have to decide what you're going to do or how you're going to do what you're going to do. Only you can do that for yourself. And this card alone is saying, like, really, this takes you continuing to be a light unto yourself. And it's a journey. This this person has their staff. And I know this card, these cards are very, very old, but there's a light that's cast from their heart that is leading the way. And it's the same thing as the rebel being a light unto themselves, being being a badass and not being afraid, not being afraid of the journey, not being afraid of themselves, not being afraid of the truth in their heart. And that's what's calling you this week. And ever more, ever more layers to burn away. So silence. Meditate, meditate, meditate. Get out of this world. Even if it's just for a few minutes, even if you meditate twice a day, stay on the path. And you know, meditation, silence. Okay, so this card is silence, right? And we just had a full moon on the 7th. And this is a mega, mega card. See that face there, the violet hues, the indigo hues, the full moon in the third eye. This is so very massive because this is different from your guided meditations where you're listening on the headphones and it's like, and now you're walking by the beach, right? And it's different from hypnosis. It's different from uh, subconscious repatterning. It's different from oming, from chanting. It's different even from laying and doing Reiki on yourself. This is no thing. This is complete. You just sit, you close your eyes. Maybe you do a few breathing things to just drop in and then you just practice being silent and still. Okay, so this isn't even using your mindful meditation uh, techniques. This is practicing being silent, being still, just being. This is one of the greatest gifts and practices you can do for yourself. Why? Because it attunes you to the voice for God. God can be source, can be Allah, can be Shekinah, can be whatever you want. Yeah, Shakira, it can even be Shakira for you. That's right, I heard you. So <laughs> whatever it is for you, but that I'm going to call it God, right? Which only really is love. Okay. It's just love, but it's love without an opposite. It's love and only love. So when we are silent and we practice our meditation of just being, of just being silent, we are listening, right? And when we listen and attune in silence, we can hear that still small voice for God, AKA Holy Spirit, AKA your higher self, AKA your heart, your heart, the truth in your heart that is saying, jump, jump, do it, go. The time is now. And as we listen, right, and all those other voices of, blah, 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 and I got to go to Target and I got to do this. And what if he doesn't like me? And what if she, that one, what if one, and my kids and the shoes and my, whatever all this stuff is, all of that will be there, sure. And eventually, though, the more you sit, the more you practice stillness, the more you practice silence, that still small voice will be audible to you. And it's always, it's always the quietest voice, that voice for God. It's the quietest voice. It's not the voice shouting. It's not the voice putting the fear of life into you. It's not the voice that's causing self-doubt, sabotage, and all that stuff. It's the gentle, kind voice that simply whispers and nudges you in the direction that is in attunement with the truth in your heart. And as you listen and as you hear new levels of awareness come to being, you burn through the veils of illusion of maya in this world and become and embody the truth of your Buddha nature that you've always been, that you've always been. And it is so beautiful. It is so powerful. So this week, the rebel is back. Now, you've been embodying the rebel for some time. So stay true to the rebel during this retrograde, which is really the whole rest of this August period. Be mindful. What sacred jewels are you keeping for yourself? And when you keep them for yourself, don't compromise. If you put sacred stones in a pouch in your pocket around your neck and you're like, I'm not going to let anyone touch these, you know, unless I totally give my authority and it's a loved one that I trust or whatever, if it's something like that, right? Then the next day and you meet someone who's like, oh, what's in that pouch? And you don't know them and you're like, oh, let me show you. You know, that's like, that's going back on yourself. Don't compromise. Make a decision and stick to it regarding your sacred, the sacred order 
of yourself and how you wish to embody that in the world so that you can trust that rebel, break through the chains of limitations and be that hermit. In a way it's a hermit because only you can do it for yourself and only you can be a light unto yourself and only you can hold your own staff. You know, I talk a lot on, I'm on Instagram. I'm not much of a Facebook girl, I'll post some stuff here and there, but Instagram, if you want to catch me, Instagram is the place and that's where I post stuff and I love spinning the staff and I have some little videos here and there sprinkled in of spinning the staff. And really, again, in the energy vehicle book I'm writing, your staff is the spinal column and it's your ability to embody integrity and wisdom, honor and truth of your sacred self. Your staff is your staff of power. Have some spine. Have some integrity. Listen to the truth in your heart and trust it. Take a leap and trust it, especially around those edges where you feel afraid. Reshift it to excitement. I'm excited. I'm excited. Trust. Know that that trust bridge, every time you are challenged to exercise trust this week, know that this is lighting up this bridge from the third chakra to your heart, and it's asking you to trust, to practice. That's your practice. That's your training ground, being able to hear it, honor it, and move in that direction without being swayed in one way or the other. And again, be mindful, right? This is not a time to be lazy. You know, it is a time of reflection, but it's, but it's mindful. It's active reflection. It's you're being constructive with your time, okay? So just be mindful because ultimately you have a beautiful opportunity and really it doesn't matter what you do. You can do this all you want, right? I don't care. What? What? I don't care. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> you can whatever. It doesn't really matter. Yet, if you would like to avail of these energies and get further embodied in the truth of your heart, really which is embodied enlightenment. Can I hear it? Embodied enlightenment. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about bridging heaven on earth, being in the world and not of it. That's you as the rebel. That's you exiting the matrix. That's you mastering the matrix. Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember, meditate, burn away those veils, be still, be silent. I will put a link to, no, I won't, because this isn't about meditation with guided. <laughs> I was going to put, I was going to put a link to my meditation playlist, but outside of your stillness and your silence, if you do want to check out some of my guided meditations, I will put a link here. Yet, truly, the wisdom this week is to learn how to be silent and be still and just listen to that voice, that voice for God, that voice for the divine love, that divine light, and let it guide you one day at a time, one step at a time, along the truest path of your heart. Beautiful. And so it is. Thank you so much. Namaste.